welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is an FE3805, it's a tier 9 British SPG. This one is located on the northeast corner of Karelia and it's under the command of 15JG52 Barar by Raktar. And he's out to settle a, well, you could say a dispute. So let's see how he gets on. Let's get this show on. Game on! Well, this is the RT that's based on the Centurion, but it's the Centurion backwards because, of course, the engine's at the front and the crew cabin is at the back of the vehicle. But there's three different howitzers you can actually have for this RT. The first one is the 5.5 inch howitzer, so that's the same as on the Crusader, the Tier 7 British SPG. The second one is the 6 inch howitzer, and you'll find that on the FB207, the Tier 8 British SPG. But the last one is the 7.2 inch howitzer and that's the same gun that you'll find on the FB4005, yes the Hesh Barn, other people call it a different name, we call it the Hesh Barn because we don't like to be rude or uh, to uh, encourage children to say the wrong word. But yes it's the same gun you get on the Death Star and quite a few other tanks as well. Of course, those ones have been bored out to become a gun rather than the howitzer. But uh, the 7.2 inch is capable of 850 Alpha, 46 millimeters of pen, and it also has a reload, a standard reload, 35.47 seconds. You can see here, Bar Bar <laughs> by Raktar, it's got a reload 28.27. Now, some people say that the 6-inch howitzer, well, I'm one of those people, actually, 6-inch howitzer is better, and the reason for that is DPM. If you look at the figures, the 7.2 will do 1,437.65 DPM, whereas the 6-inch howitzer, 1,462 DPM. So, you're actually getting more DPM from the smaller howitzer. And the reason for that is the reload time. The reload time on the six inch is only 26 seconds, whereas on this one it's 35. So you can see a big difference in time. And of course, most people are capable of uh, reloading very, very quickly and reducing the reload time. Look at that. The enemy all grouped together, made an easy shot there. And he picked up 300 hit points off the 7032 and another 88 off the Lurva. Now he's backing up because, of course, those enemy are coming in from that corner. All we've got up there is one tank to hold them back at the moment, the IS-3. And he's going to find that really difficult in a short while, unless he gets some help. Well, we fired another round in and, yes, arrived by Raktor has this habit of looking away after he shoots and we normally berate that but the fact is that because we want to see what happens to the shot we want to see which tank he hits and how he hits them but uh, in this particular interest uh, we're in this video we're trying to settle which is better the big gun or the small gun and I would say the small guns better because you can hit more of the enemy but he says that the big gun is better because of course you do more damage with each shot and of course uh, you can penetrate enemy vehicles as well because it has a uh, more pen. Well, the battle is now proceeding in that corner. He's backed into the corner to try and uh, defend himself. But in actual fact, we've got more players now coming over to try and defend that corner. 7032, he's hit this guy before he fires around in and looks away. So we don't know what happened to that shot, but I don't think he hit anything because it's not showing. Although he does have 727 hit points of stun assist. You can now see the lure that he hit earlier. Now that guy is a one shot. If a round lands anywhere near him, it's going to take him out of the game. So he's going to fire that round in. We're almost there. Long reload. Rounds out. And it... Oh, he did kill the lure. We didn't see the actual kill because he was um, a blind shot at the time, but he definitely got him because it popped up and said he got the kill. 
Okay, he's found another one, and a meal two. And he's also a one shot with only 91 hit points, but he goes down to a level one. A tiger mouse, well, he's got a lot more hit points. He's 100% health at the moment. All we're doing to him is trying to strip him of himself. Oh! Massive damage to the guy all at once. Not just the shot that came from Barar Bairaktar. It was actually um, many other shots that went in at the same time, although he only got 616 for the fire, 757 for the shots, uh, but no stun assist off that one at all. And the Tiger Mouse goes round the corner and a magic call finishes him off. So the entire attack that came up the uh, west side of the map, the only one that survived is 7032. We don't know where he is. Rounds out the Skoda. Well, it's a good hit, 208, but I reckon you could have done that one with the 6-inch. You could tell he was interested because he was zooming in and out with his mouse wheel. And uh, yes, that's a habit quite a few tank drivers have. The 7032 is a one-shot. He's only got two hit points left. So he's going to go wrap down if somebody just nudges him on him, or even breathes on him for that matter. Okay, STB1, he's a one-shot. Unfortunately, the shell wasn't close enough to actually splash him. But we're two down on the enemy. They did have a big attack in our direction. They failed. But it looks like uh, we need to get out of this area because we could fall prey to that 7032. He's still got the ability to deliver a lot of damage from two major guns. 122 millimeters. He fires in the STB1 and misses again. This RT is only capable of 40 kilometers an hour, so he does need to move away as fast as he can, really. There's the Leopard 1 on the enemy team. STB1. The Leopard 1 could possibly be penetrated. He's got very thin armor. The Manticore has managed to finish off the 7032, so we don't have to worry about him. But the new tank's turned up, and that's the Jaegerun. He's coming up from the south route. Well, he got a nice hit, and he got stun assist. With three down on the enemy at the moment, so it's looking as if this game is going to be a defeat. But it's a huge amount of damage he's accumulated. 2,552 hit points of damage and 1,500 of stun assist. Okay, Yegru getting closer and closer. So you can see he does stay to watch sometimes when it's important. He doesn't look away. And you can see that shell did land against the frontal plates just on the engine deck. There's a yellow mark there. That's where the round lies. Now, can he get around into the side? He's still waiting. Another enemy's turned up. It's the Scorpion G. And he's very low on hit points, and the Manticore finishes him off. And now it's only two down. So we're motoring as fast as we possibly can. Ideally, we need to get away from the cap area. We can still shoot back at the cap if we need to. They've got their ELC capping at the moment, but he won't last very long when the shark gets there. In fact, the ELC suddenly decided to drive away before he gets hit. There he is, lining up a shot, just in case we can get one. Oh, he got a splash kill! Beautiful shot. Lined it up ahead of his pile, and he went right into the splash zone, and the ELC was low enough on hill that that one killed him. In fact, it was a blind kill at that. So his second kill, and he gets a light. Okay, we're moving away from the camp area. We can still hit the enemy. And now the scores are even. Okay, we've got a Tiger 2 coming up. Let's have a look. We can't see him at the moment. Our guys think he's in there. Tiger 2, did he get hit? No, he's not stunned at the moment. There's the Jaeger in. Now we can definitely hit him inside. There's the level 1. So three of their tanks are close to our cap area. The only one that's not is their RT, which is also an FB3805. Okay. The Leopard, well, we could... We can't kill him with one shot, 
we can certainly upset him. Ideally, we need to see the Jaeger. The side of the Jaeger would be enough to take him out. And in fact, actually, he has now turned up. But we're going for the Tiger too because he's got more hit points. Round sound. Well, he definitely stunned him. Didn't get any hit points off him. Again, he's getting closer and closer to the enemy. We're not receiving any fire from the enemy RT, which tends to make me think that he might be on the move. We can see the enemy RT is trying to actually hit our Manticore. That was where the, his last shot fell. There's the Yeguru. Tiger 2 must be close. There he is. Okay, now hit him this time. Bowls in ahead. Rounds out and... Well, that's a lot of damage. 335. It's made him a one shot. And he was killed with the next round by the Manticore. So the Manticore got him from almost in the swamp. That's a huge hit. Unfortunately, the Leopard 1's just killed our Sharp Future 4. But we're almost reloaded. Working out his track. Bounce out. He fired. Well, snap, kind of snap, but he got him! He got him! Kind of snap, and that leaves just two enemies left. The Jaegeru, and he's a one-shot. But unfortunately, the FB3805 just killed our Manticore. So now it's two versus two. One RT, and a tank destroyer on their team. On our team, it's the T-54 Lightweight. And he goes down to the T-54. And that changes the battle now. It's two against one. And all we've got to do now is kill the FB3805. And it's game over. And he just gave away his position. We know exactly where he is now. He's back near his cap area. Probably in grid square H1. But he might be in J1. Just gave away with the tracer. It's one of the reasons why you do have to change position nowadays if you don't. There's a very good chance that somebody's going to find you. In fact, now we've seen him. We're dialing him on his position. He's seen us, but he's not doing anything because he's aiming at the T-54. Guns up. A lovely big hit for 370, but it didn't kill him. But the T-54 lightweight is getting very close. He did try a shot at us. Okay, we're almost loaded. He's also got the big gun, the top gun. I wonder what his damage will be at the end of the game. We've auto-aimed on. Oh! T-54 Lightweight takes the kill, though ends the game. But it's guns up because they got a victory. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was an ace tanker game for 15 JG, 52 Barara by Raktar in the FB3805. What a great game that was. His, um, he managed to get the ace tanker. It's not the first time he's had one. He's had many before. He also managed to get a bruiser medal by getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 17. Gore's medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. And he got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. His win eight was 9,648, which is super unicum standard and a lot more. So uh, did he settle the argument? Well, let's have a look at team score. Oh my gum, look at that. 4,526 hit points of damage. It's certainly the highest damage in the game, but it's not 20% of the enemy hit pool, and that's why it's not a high caliber. It was a tier 10 game, but he was tier 9, and even so, he still manages to outperform everyone else. We can see that the enemy FB3805 only managed 1,125 with the same gun, so I guess it's down to the fact who is better and better with this particular arty who is better and in this game it's definitely 15 jg 52 barrar by raktar he was he was well better than anyone else on the enemy team in this one 4526 next highest damage was the sharp u4 who got 3937 third highest damage the stb1 with 3766 hit points when it came to kills, it was the Manticore. Five kills to him, including one kill from in the swamp where he killed an enemy tank up on the heights. 
Three kills went to the FE3805 Barra by Raktar, and also to the Leopard 1 on the enemy team, and also to our T54 Lightweight, who was the last one to get a kill in the game. When it came to base XP, yes, it's Barra by Raktar. He managed 1,181 out of that one. 1,131 went to the Manticore, and 947 went to the Sha Future 4. 20 shots fired, 7 direct hits, and 1 penetration. You actually, with the top gun, you get um, 46 rounds of ammo, so more than enough so you won't run out. 18 splashes as well, 4,526 hit points of damage, of which 4,156 were at more than 300 meters. So, which one did he actually penetrate in that game? Well, looking at the list, I would have thought the ELC, but it's not actually. He splash killed that guy. And um, I'm looking at the list again. Did he penetrate the FE? No, because of course it was a low roll. And it doesn't appear to be any of the tanks that he actually killed. So it must be another tank that he didn't kill, but he did get a very large hit on. Not the 703, not the Emil, but it was the Tiger Mouse. Yes, he actually hit the guy uh, whilst he was hiding behind the rock. And we saw that he actually suddenly dropped from 100% health all the way down to a splash kill in a few shots alone. And in fact, actually, he penetrated the engine bay on the Tiger Mouse and set light to him. And that's where he scored 1,375 hit points of damage. Most of that from the actual hit, but a lot of it from the fire as well. Going back to detail. He managed to spot one enemy vehicle, damaged 12 of the enemy, killed three, 173 hit points of damage assistance, 1,890 hit points of stun assist of 16 stuns. That accounted for the ace tanker. The tank he spotted, by the way, was the enemy FP3805, who hadn't been seen up until that point. He also managed to earn 33,063 credits on a premium account, and he got 25 bonds for a mission achievement and 1,771 experience points out of that game. Now, I can say, I'm pretty sure that you wouldn't be able to get these sort of damage levels with the 6-inch. I think that is a basically a, a def definite. There's no way you would get that sort of score off a 6-inch howitzer unless you penetrated that many. But what we can say as well is that you're more likely to win a Confederate medal because you're more likely to hit more of the enemy than anyone else with the 6-inch howitzer because you get more rounds out. You've got a bigger DPM, but you've got more chance to pump more rounds out and hit more enemy tanks. So you're much more likely to get this medal, the Confederate medal, if you use the six inch. Plus, you're more likely to stun a lot of tanks, and that might get you the uh, ace tanker if your teammates then shoot the enemy tanks that have been stunned. I suppose 15 JG-52 <laughs> by Raktor would counter that and say you get a longer stun with the bigger gun, and you actually need more chance of doing big damage for every shot. And so I can concede that, but the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, the, there is a bigger DPM with a 6-inch than there is with the 7.2-inch, so it's really horses for courses. How good a player are you with a 6-inch against the 7.2-inch? So on this particular battle, I would concede to uh, Barar by Raktar that he's right, that in his hands, the 7.2 inch is going to generate more damage. But on the 6 inch, well, depending on the person, I think there are plenty out there who would say, yeah, I get more um, better games out of the 6 inch outer on this particular arty because I can hit more enemy. It's horses for courses in the end. In other words, that's what I would say. But what a great game by Barar by Raktar. I haven't seen one like that for a while. And also the fact that, yes, an FB3805 RT can carry at tier 10, no less. Hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.